So once again, we're going to take a look at the method of annihilators, but now what we're going to see is we're going to see a different example. We're going to see an example of what happens when we don't have one of the simplest forms of our non-homogeneous part, when in fact what we have instead is we have, um, rather than just a, a power of e to the x, uh, what we end up having is we actually end up having uh, something that is maybe an x e to the x or something where we're going to have to deal with an annihilator that's higher order. That is, is that, you know, instead of d minus 1, it's d minus 1 squared, d plus 2 cubed, okay? And so the process is basically the same. It's just that what we're going to end up with as a trial solution is going to end up being different. And so that's going to change somewhat the method that we're going to use in order to solve uh, these particular kinds of problems, okay? So let's take a look and let's see, for example, we have um, d squared minus 3d minus 10y equals 8xe to the negative x, okay? So the first thing that we want to notice is constant coefficients here in our non-homogeneous part. And our homogeneous part is a power of e to the negative x, but it's actually xe to the negative x. So it's annihilator. We'll take a look at what its annihilator will be, but its annihilator is not going to end up being just d plus 1, okay? Does not equal a of d, all right? Because that's actually not going to get rid of the x term here. Right? Instead, the annihilator is going to be d plus 1 squared, right? Okay, because what we get for d plus 1 squared, the solution for d plus 1 squared is going to be, um, uh, you know, c1 e to the negative x plus c2 e to, uh, x e to the negative x, and we need that x piece. We're going to need that x piece. And so this is going to end up being our a of d, our annihilator, all right? So first, let's do the, uh, the um, complementary part. So yc, okay, and so we're going to get our auxiliary polynomial of r squared minus 3r minus 10 equals 0, okay, and so that's going to be r minus 5 times r plus 2 equals 0, and that it implies that r equals 5 and r equals negative 2. So yc, our complementary part, is going to be c1e to the 5x plus c2 e to the negative 2x. So there's good news all around for that. And the good news is this, is that uh, it turns out that it doesn't actually have the same power of e um, as our f of x. And so consequently, we're not going to actually have to modify our trial solution. But again, like I said, what we have here is we have an x e to the negative x. So our trial solution is going to be dependent upon this annihilator right here. Okay. And so consequently, what we're going to do is we're actually going to just modify our trial solution a little bit. And that's going to give us then that our yp is going to equal a naught e to the negative x plus a one x e to the negative x. Okay. And that goes along with this d plus one squared. All right. D plus one squared is going to end up giving you a negative x and an x e to the negative x. All right. And so consequently, It'll have, you know, those two solutions. We're going to have to account for those two solutions in our trial solution. All right. So now that we have a trial solution, what we're going to do is we're going to take this up here. We're going to go um, with the d squared minus 3d minus 10. Okay. So d squared minus 3d minus 10. We're going to operate on a naught e to the negative x plus a1 x e to the negative x. Okay. And... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my derivatives one at a time. So I'm going to first find yp prime. And that is going to end up being negative a naught e to the negative x plus, or, uh, plus a1 e to the negative x minus a1 x e to the negative x. Okay. And then I'm just going to actually, to save myself just a little bit of time, uh, at the end, I'm just going to group these guys in terms of their e to the negative x and x e to the negative x. So this is going to be a naught plus a1 e to the negative x minus a1 x e to the negative x. Okay. Then yp double prime is going to equal, okay, well, we'll just take this piece right here. It's going to end up being negative a naught 
plus a1 e to the negative x minus, and this will be uh, a1 e to the negative x plus a1 x e to the negative x, right? And then grouping again, I end up with negative, right? A naught, okay, and this is just, see the negative, it's gonna be, it's a minus two A naught. So negative A naught uh, plus two A one E to the negative X plus A one X E to the negative X, all right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug that back into my equation here. So first Y double prime, so that's gonna be negative A naught plus two A one e to the negative x plus a one x e to the negative x minus three times a naught plus a one e to the negative x minus a one x e to the negative x minus 10 times a naught e to the negative x plus a one x e to the negative x. So all I've done is I, I just plugged in, you know, here's the 10, that gives me just my trial solution, multiply by the trial solution, the negative three times the first derivative and the negative two, or excuse me, and then the second derivative. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna combine like terms, all right, with my negative e to the, e to the negative x's and my x e to the negative x's. So that's gonna give me negative a naught plus two a one minus three a naught plus a one minus 10 a naught. And all of that, those are all my e to the negative x's. All right, we're gonna combine those in a second. And then plus, and we'll go a one plus three A one minus 10 A one X E to the negative X. And all of that's gonna end up equaling eight X E to the negative X. All right, whoo, so that's negative a naught minus three a naught is negative four a naught minus 10 a naught. So that's negative 14 a naught, negative two a one minus three a one, negative five a one, so minus five a one. And then, and that's e to the negative x plus and this one here is going to be a1 plus 3a1 is 4a1 minus 10a1 is negative 6a1 x e to the negative x equals 8 e to the negative x. Now, what you'll notice over here in your f of x is that there are no e to the negative x's. So that means negative 14a naught minus 5a1 equals zero. And over here, negative six A one is gonna then equal eight because that's how many eight X E to the negative X's is. So that tells me that A one is gonna equal negative eight over six, okay? And then I'm just gonna plug that back in, negative 14 A naught minus five times negative eight over six, okay? This is negative 14 A naught plus 40 over six equals zero. So negative 14 a naught equals negative 40 over six. And so consequently, a naught will equal whew, negative 40 times 14 over, times negative 14 over six, which ends up equaling, wait for it, um, 
negative 280 or positive 280 over 3 which equals we'll just keep it at that 280 over 3 there it is so my particular solution now okay a naught remember was in front of the e to the x or e to the negative x right and so my particular solution is yp is going to equal 280 over 3 e to the negative x plus, and then we have, what is it, negative 8 over 6? Negative 8 over 6 x e to the negative x. Okay? So consequently, our total solution y equals c1 e to the 5x plus c2 e to the negative 2x minus, or plus, excuse me, 280 over 3 e to the negative x minus 8 over 6 x e to the negative x. Oh, Nelly. Them's long ones. Whenever we have to go through and do that kind of simplification, it can take you a little while. Now, process is the same. If I happen to have added or subtracted something wrong, I'll go back and revise. If you catch it, hmm, I don't know, I'll give you a point of extra credit. Okay? All right. See you guys uh, later. That's uh, basically how that works. So remember, it's the same process. It's just that our trial solution ends up having to incorporate the x e to the negative x. Don't forget that you're going to need a coefficient, right, an a naught for that e to the negative x as well. We can't forget that part. All right. Okay. So this concludes the video.